רבותיי, ערב טוב. We have בעזרת השם, הבעלים לטובה, הפורם is coming up next week. So we have to know some things about that. There's a lot of halachot, lots of interesting things. Number one, we have to hear this week, Parsha Zachor. It's going to be coming from the Maftir. After the whole Parsha we read, on Shabbat, then we're going to read Zachor. And it's going to be the Maftir, and that therefore, a person has to be very careful this Shabbat. First of all, you should be careful to come. For the Torah reading. Why? Because it's the Oraita, it's from the Torah. Most of the poskim say, the Parsha Zachor, it's the only Parsha from the Torah that we read that's from the Torah to, to, hear, to hear this Parsha. All the other ones are all Derabanan. Right? Uh, either it was Metakend, it was decreed by Moshe Rabbeinu, it was decreed by Ezra Sofer, all the, thing, all the Torah readings that we have. But this one, Zachor, is from the Torah. Why? Because the Kadosh Baruch Hu wants us to remember what Amalek did to us, and what we have to do to eradicate Amalek, to wipe out Amalek. This is a from, from commandment from the Torah. So a person has to be very careful, to, first of all, to come to the Torah and to hear Zachor. That's number one, right? And number two also, he has to have in mind that it's a mitzvah from the Torah. He should have in mind, and also the Chazan should have in mind. So what does that mean? The Baal Koreh. The Baal Koreh should announce to the community, or the rabbi, or whatever, right? That this is a mitzvah from the Torah. So everybody should have intention to fulfill the obligation from the Torah, from the Baal Kore, and the Baal Kore should have also intention to fulfill the obligation of the Kahal, from, from the mitzvah of the Torah, of, of uh, reading Parshat Zachor. This is a very important thing to understand, right? Also, it has to be read from a Sefer Torah, which is Kasher. So you can't read it at home, you know, open up your Chumash and, you know, okay, Zachor, and, uh, right? No, it doesn't work like that, right? You can't read in the Chumash, it has to be from a Sefer Torah. And also, you need a Minyan, not only that, right? Also, if you don't have a Minyan, you can't read it. So that's the only way to do it. And this is the proper way to do it. So therefore, make sure you come. Make sure you understand what you're doing at that time. Make sure you pay attention. That you hear every word, right? Because, you know, if you don't hear it, so what, what, what did you do? What did you accomplish? You didn't really accomplish much, right? If you're talking and looking in the newspaper, you know? Uh, Gazeta, Gazeta, you know? Looking over here, looking over here. <laughs> this is not the way to, to do the mitzvah. You know, that the truth is, I, I have to tell you that the people who are bringing here the newspapers, you know, to, to, you know, they shouldn't bring it. Because it's not allowed to read the newspaper in the Knesset. You know, not on Shabbat, not on Yom Chol, never. You should never open a newspaper on, 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 on the Bet Knesset. Not allowed to read, because this is Divrei Chol. This is not the Divrei Torah. You know, so a person has to be careful about that. What business does Gazeta have to do with Bet Knesset? Bukharian Times, or New York Times, or Shemir uh, Akhev, right? Whatever it is. What difference does it make? It's all the same. It's all the same. It's Divrei Chol. Bet Knesset, only for Divrei Torah, for only Divrei Tefillah. That's the only thing you, we talk about over here. So a person has to be careful about that. Don't bring that stuff here, because, you know, if you bring it, somebody will open it and start looking at it, you know, and you're going to be giving din, lo aleinu, for, for causing that person to sin, you know? That uh, you're bringing the gazeta, the uh, newspapers, into the Bet Knesset. Newspaper, uh, I'm sorry? It's not a library. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's a Torah library, right? That's the thing. You can have a Torah library, no problem, but not, it's not a Divrei Chol, right? That's the thing. You can't bring by the way, the question is also asked about Shabbat. Are you allowed to read newspaper on Shabbat? No way. This is the question, right? No. I mean, this, is the, this is the question. So the truth is, you know, that depends also what kind of newspaper it is. If you're talking about a secular newspaper, like New York Times, you know, New York Post, uh, Daily News, and things like this, you're never allowed to read that. Uh, not on Yom Chol, not on Shabbat. Why is that? Because it has over there Dibek Fira, all kinds of Fira, Pritzut, uh, women who are not modest, all kinds of things like this. So, like this newspaper, you should never read that. Uh, not on Yom Chol, not on Shabbat. Never, never such a thing like this. So, uh, the only newspaper you should read is the newspaper which is Dati, you know, religious newspaper. Something which is coming from the viewpoint of Torah. You know, that's, that's something else. We're not talking about that. That you're allowed to read. But on Shabbat, you know, since it's Divrei Chol over there, unless there's some Divrei Torah there, it could be. Sometimes, in a, in a religious newspaper, they put the Ben Torah there. Parsha Shavua. Okay, that you can read. I have no problem, you know. You want to read Parsha Shavua in, in, your, in your newspaper? You can read that. No problem. But you cannot read over there two things, right? You shouldn't read, first of all, the advertisements, right? This is you're not allowed to read. This is a big problem, you know. Wh- whatever you're looking at advertisements on Shabbat, don't, don't read it. Because there's, there's a prohibition against that. The rabbis made a prohibition not to read ads, you know, pirsumim, uh, advertisements on Shabbat. What's the reason why? The rabbi said this, don't read advertisements. I'm not going to buy it on Shabbat. I'll buy it on Sunday, right? So, so what's the problem? Let me read it now. And then I'll go on Sunday and I'll pick it up. You know, I'll, I'll, take my, uh, I'll take my wallet, right, my credit card, and I'll pick it up on Sunday. No. 
Because you may come to write it down. That's the reason why. You know, the rabbi said. If you look at advertisements, you may come to write it down. So therefore, you should never look at advertisements on Shabbat. Whether it's in the newspaper, or whether it's on the billboard, or whatever, it's on some video screen, right? Whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Advertisements are su on Shabbat. Right? That's the thing. So you have to be careful about that, right? So then, what can you really do on Shabbat? <laughs> the truth is, you know, <clears throat> I heard from, from, uh, from uh, my, my rabbis, that Maran, Rabbi Yashalom, I didn't, uh, you know, excuse my language, but I never went inside with him to the bathroom, you know? So I didn't know what he was doing in the bathroom. Man, you know what I mean? But his son told me that when he was going in the bathroom, he was reading the newspaper over there on Shabbat. The newspaper, the religious newspaper, you know? Why? Why? Why, why to read in the, newspaper, in the bathroom? Because over there you cannot learn Divei Torah, right? In the bathroom. Asur. So therefore, since now you're not allowed to do Divei Torah in the bathroom... So you should you can read a newspaper, right? That's except except what you should read the advertisements, as we said. But the articles you can read there, why? Because they say that maybe you know there's something in there that you may need, some kind of community information, you know. So they allow you to do that. That's that that you can do. But don't read the ads. You can read the articles, but as we said, right in the bathroom you're not allowed to debate, read debate Torah. So if you have over there, you know, uh, uh, you know, like uh, Parsha Sharua, right? Don't read this in, in the. Uh, in the in the bathroom, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not allowed to read. You cannot read the Torah in the bathroom. I remember one time, you know, there was one person. I made a mistake when I was a kid. You know, when I was young, I gave a certain book, you know, to somebody who was not religious in, in this area. You know, I gave him a certain book about something and something good, good book. You know, Meshilat Yeshem or Derech Hashem, Derech Hashem, the book of the book of the, book of the Ramchal. So I gave it to him. So what do I see? He goes in the bathroom and he reads it over there. I said, what did he do? I, said, I made a mistake. I never should have gotten, gotten him this book. All he does is read in the bathroom. <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot read the Torah in the bathroom. You know what I mean? Person has to understand, right? Every place has its time. Every, every uh, time has its place. That's the, that's the way it is. But anyway, getting back to what we said, right? Parshat Zachor, you have to make sure that you read it. It also has to be a kosher sefer Torah. So they say, that's why the, the poskim say that when you do Parshat Zachor, bring out the best sefer Torah that you have for that one. Since it's from the Torah, Make sure everything is kosher over there, you know? No, no, uh, no monkey business over there. Don't bring out old Sefer Torah that, uh, that you don't know. It hasn't been checked for a long time. Nobody used it for a long time. God knows what's going on with that. Bring out the best Torah you have and use that one for Pasha Zachor. Why? Because it's from the Torah. Right? That's the thing, you know? So you've got to make sure you fulfill your obligation. The truth is, you know, that um, there's also an issue of bracha levatala. You know, that uh, a person who makes a bracha, asher bacharbanu mikola amin, all these things, Hashem Natananu, right? In Sefer Torah, which is Pasul, so he's, according to most poskim, he's saying Bracha Levatala. You know, so you have to be careful about that as well. So the truth is that there's a stek sekah, there's a double doubt over here. What's a double doubt? The, you know, we say that if the Sefer Torah, maybe it's Pasul, we're not sure, you can read it. But if you see that it's Pasul for sure, you're not allowed to read it. Why? Because if it's a maybe, if it's a safek, prapros. So then you can read it. Why? Because the stek sekah, according to Rambam, there's one safek. The Rambam says you're allowed to read a Sefer Torah which is not which is pasul and say the bracha on that. So the Rambam, according to most Rishonim, is not allowed. So one safek is maybe the halacha like the Rambam. The other safek, the other doubt, the other vapros, is that maybe the Sefer Torah is kasher. I don't know. I didn't see that it was pasul. So therefore, because of safek seka, this is why you're allowed to bless on a Sefer Torah, you, even though you don't know for sure that it's kosher. You know, and that's why we use any Sefer Torah on Shabbat because you know we we use a safek seka double doubt. This is the reason why. Otherwise. You, if you didn't check it, you wouldn't be able to read that Sefer Torah until you check it for sure, you know, 100%. You, you can't read it. So that's, that's the way it is. So therefore, right, uh, when it comes to Parshat Zachor, though, since it's from the Torah, we don't want to rely on that. Bring the best Sefer Torah that you have and use that one, right? That's the, that's the way to do it. Another thing, you know, that Maran, used to tell us, be very careful, you know, on, on, on the Parshat Zachor, you should really come, don't go to uh, Ashkenazi Minyan that, that day, if you're Sephardi, right? You should not go. Why? Because you have to hear the, the reading of the Parshat Zachor in the, in the minhag of your forefathers, right? Which is the Sephardi pronunciation. So you should go to the, where your forefathers, right? Your minhag uh, is like that. If they read like that, this is the way to do it. In order that you should read properly. Because the truth is, you know, the Chathila, you don't want to be listening to a strange, you know, miftah, uh, you know, some kind of accent, which you can't, you know, like the person used to tell me one time, uh, you know, I, she said, he tells me, I, I go to a certain shul, and over there, you know, when they start shahrit, you know, after korbanot, right? what's the first thing you say after korbanot? Hodu, right? So he says, over there, it says, basically, they say hodi, right? Hodi? Hodi, what's hodi? What, what, hodi means like, I'm from India, you know, Indian, you know, what, uh, what is hodi? 
<laughs> what does that have to do with that? Right? The word is hodu, not hodi. Right? So if they're saying hodi instead of hodu, you got a problem. You know, don't go to a synagogue like that. But the Abad, okay, you fulfilled your obligation anyway, because at least you know what you're, the, what, you know what they're saying. I mean, you know, you're following it right in the Chumash. You know what they're saying more or less, even though they're not pronouncing it properly. So a person should go to a place where they pronounce things properly, and also the Bal Kore, you know, knows how to read properly. Also, you know, he knows how to say everything properly with the proper timing. And I'll tell you one more thing. I'll stop here. I don't want to keep you too long, but you know, there's I see some people over here in the neighborhood. Uh, a couple of times I've seen this, you know, and one time at, at the Georgian Shul, I remember, you know, somebody tried to do this. And I stopped him. I said, no, don't do this. You know, so you know what they do with some synagogues, right? They, they bring, uh, right, uh, some Balkore, right, who thinks he's some kind of, uh, I don't know, Hasid, I don't know what, it, what he thinks he's David Amelech, I don't know what he thinks he is. So he comes, right, and he starts to read the Parsha Zahor. He reads it five times. Parsha Zahor. Five times. Why does he do five times? One time he does Sephardi, and then he does Barakin, and then he does Temani, and then he does Ashkenazi. What? What, what business do you have to do all this Min Hagim? What business do you have with this? You Ashkenazi? You Temani? You Moroccan? Why are you reading according to other people's Min Hagim? So they think, you know, that you have to do this. You know why? Because it's the writer, so Safik the writer, you know? It's a doubt, you know? Maybe, I, maybe this is the, not the right... The, this is, maybe this is not the right Tamim. You know, maybe this Tamim is wrong. But the truth is, you know, that you shouldn't be uh, concerned about that. And I'll tell you why. Very simple. Number one, first of all, when I was in the, uh, Yushalayim, and all the great, great Minyanim over there. Never saw anybody who does this, you know, reads the Parsha Zahor five times. Who made, who made this crazy idea? You know, to read Ashkenazi and then Sfardi and then Marakai. What, 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 what is this business? The Gdolim never did this in any of the Gdolim that I saw. Never did such a thing like this. So don't bring in all kinds of strange Minhagim, you know, into the shul, you know, all kinds of strange things. Hadashimi uh, Karobao, you know, what, kind of, what is this? What are you bringing over here? What did you bring this from? Were you from the sky you brought, you brought it down? Read it five times? One time, you read it, you fulfilled your obligation. The truth is, you know, that also there's another thing. That, that the, reason, the truth is that the ta'amim is a very important thing, to read according to the proper ta'amim. But, you know, the masort that we have, that we read, you know, according to the Yushalmi ta'amim, you know, the, the Sfari, Yushalmi. So that's the, that's the best one, because the Sfari is the best. Sfari is always the best, you should know, by the way. The masort of the Sfarim is number one. Nobody comes close to us. You know why? What's the reason why? Very simple. Because the Sephardim have a tradition all the way from Bait Sheni. You know, whatever we did. There was always a community, a Sephardi community, from the time of Bait Sheni that was destroyed until today. There was always a Sephardi community in Eretz Israel. So whatever they do over there, this is the proper minhag, you should know. It comes from Bait Sheni. comes from the second temple. So don't come and say, oh, maybe this is the wrong one. What do you mean? What are you talking about? How can it be the wrong one? Did this come from Bait Sheni, this is minhagim. What are you, doing? What are you doing? coming and say, saying, maybe it's not the right one? Oh, what kind of thing is it? Also, there's another reason. The reason is because even if you didn't, you know, this says in the halacha like this, if you read the Torah, okay, without the Tami, right? Let's say you made a mistake with Tami. By the way, who can really read the Tami 100%? Does anybody read 100% of the Tami? Nobody reads 100%. Okay, some, if you're good, maybe you do 80%, right? 90%, right? But there's always make mistakes with the Tami. 100%, you know? You know what they say, right? That the Arizal, Allah Shalom, he knew the Tamim 100%, you know? So he used to read the Torah, Sefer Torah without any Nikudot. 100%. <laughs> okay, there you go, right? Okay, if you say so, if you say so. Right? He knew 100% the Nikudot, you know? So he didn't need to read this, he's a Nikudot. So he didn't have a Chumash, he had a Sefer Torah. He used to read straight from the Sefer Torah. But, what, what is, but, but who knows the Tamim 100%? Nobody does. So we never get to Tamim 100%. You know what I mean? It doesn't work like that. But even if you didn't, the Halakha says, right? Let's say you said that you, you read the Torah without Tamim. Zero time, right? What's halacha? Yatsai de chova? You fulfilled your obligation or no? Yeah, the answer is yes. But the abad, yatsai de chova. So there's no reason now to read it again, you know, with different time and this time and that time. What, what business do you have with these, with these things? You know, to read it again and again and again and again. The first time you read it, yatsai de chova, you fulfilled your obligation. There's no reason to go back and do it again, you understand? So this is like, a, you know, the, the people think that when they do these kinds of things, they're like hasidim, you know? They're mit hased. But the truth is, they're matinim, you know? That's, in other words, they're doing strange things, you know, with people. We never saw such things before like this. Where did they get this from? Where did these ideas come from to their head? To read five times, Parshat Zachor. What kind of thing is this, you know? Like in the same thing, by the way, I'll tell you one more thing, and then we'll stop here, I want to keep you going. You know, there's also, it says in the Rambam, right, regarding going to the mikveh, okay? So the truth is, you know, that some people don't realize when, when a woman goes into a mikveh, or even a man, right? Uh, but a woman is more important, right? A man is just a minhag. The woman is like Isu Karet, you know, if she doesn't go to mikveh, Isu Karet. It's a very big, it's a very big problem, you know. So they think sometimes that when they go into the mikveh, they have to dip like, you know, several times, you know, five times, six times, seven times. 
There's no reason. The Rambam says, you know, once is enough. That's enough. What do you, why do you have to go six times, seven times, dip in, do the same thing seven times? What does it help you? What does it, uh, what does it accomplish? Another thing, you know, which I just heard from somebody, which is really funny, you know, it makes me laugh. But they, they, they told me, they said that when they go into the mikveh, you know, some lady told me this, she goes into the mikveh, and she says, oh, you know, it says, but you have to jump up a little bit, you know, because your feet should get wet on the bottom. Because if you're standing on the floor, right, your foot is not getting the water inside there. You know, there's no water coming in. So is that, is that the truth? No, it's not, not, it's not correct. Right? The, the truth is that according to halakha, a person who's standing in the mikveh with his feet, he right, doesn't need to jump up. He just has to dip his head inside. Because since his feet are already wet when he went in, Right? It, the water is already everywhere. So the, you don't need. The same thing, by the way, if you take Kelim to the mikveh, you know, Kelim. You go to the mikveh, right? There's now Baruch Hashem, we have one on 108, we have one on Main Street, whatever it is, right? All these things. We have to take the Kelim also to the mikveh. But only metal and, and, and glass, right? Not, not ceramics, you know? You don't have to dishes, ceramic dishes, you know, uh, this kind of thing, right? Earthenware, uh, you know, uh, pottery, you know? You don't need, this doesn't need. Only glass and metal needs mikveh, right? Not ceramics. Not, uh, right? Not, not China. China doesn't need mikveh. What do you need China? What China? Uh, China? Maybe China, the country China needs mikveh. They need mikveh. There's something else, right? They don't have any mikveh over there. But we don't need to be mikveh for China. So, so uh, what I'm trying to tell you is like this, right? That when you tovel the, uh, the kali into the mikveh, so the place where you're holding it, maybe, maybe the water doesn't get in over there. Ah, oh, so I have to like flip it around, you know, a little bit. You know, is that true? No, it's not true. Once you've got your hands wet, and it's already wet, you can put the you clean into the mikveh, and you don't have to let it go, because the, since your hands are wet, the water is everywhere there. This is the halakha, you understand? So there's no reason to play around with these kinds of things and play all kinds of games. The same thing when a person goes to the mikveh with his feet. Once his feet got wet, when he went in, he doesn't have to jump up, you know, and jump. Uh, what's, uh, what's there to jump about? The water already got in there. That's it. It's good, right? So you put your body in all the way, one shot, and it's good. Baruch <laughs> Adonai